my, these black box radios. <laughs> you really have to wonder. So this one, actually, I think I did a video on this one. Yeah, I did. I did do a video on this one. Uh, this is the one that had the broken wire to the uh, coax connector, but it's got other problems. Um, one of them that the customer had mentioned was that the uh, channel selector doesn't work uh, sometimes. Dirty, might need to be cleaned. Well, that's not the problem. Um, they're not really channel, you know, in the old days we had rotary, they were wafer style switches. And they made a, you know, a good noticeable clunk, 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 clunk when you turned them. Well, this one, you know, you can turn this thing or shoot with your pinky. Okay, nowadays in this radio, it's a rotary encoder. Uh, the radio is microprocessor controlled. Um, it's a Ranger board, but uh, yeah, it's an oddball. And I think they use this in some of the Superstar export radio. And when I say export radios, I mean real export export radios, radios you just don't see in this country because it is an oddball number. It's a EPT DX twenty nine twelve Z down there. But uh, the problem is. Um, is the rotary encoder, it's falling apart. Uh, and honestly, I could put a new one in here, and, hell, you put this thing back in a vehicle, it could start doing the same exact thing the next, next, the next day. I mean, it's horribly designed because all of the circuit board right here hangs off of the little tiny rotary encoder that's back here. So, that is it. That's your channel selector. No bigger than the potentiometers, you know, used for controls. It's just a little tiny rotary encoder. That little thing has to support this entire circuit board and everything that's mounted to it and all of these wires. And you have to remember, these radios are mounted like this. This is facing up. So, yeah, you can see what it is. Mirage MX, what is that, 36 HP. So, every time you hit a bump, it's going to be trying to yank that board. All that wiring harness is in there bouncing. It's pulling on that rotary encoder. Um, yeah, just not smart design. Now, if the radio sat like this, it probably wouldn't be too bad. They did put a foam block that goes from there down to the PLL chip, but it, it's just, what do you do? There's no screw holes. There's really not a way to mount a bracket. There's circuit traces the whole way out to the very edges on all sides of this thing. So the only thing I could come up with well, the first thing I did was just ran some wire ties through the side here, which isn't a problem because you can see the, this is, you know, the side of the radio, so that won't interfere with the covers. There's enough room, because there's that much room right there before you actually get get to the uh, the covers. So they, they won't, they're, it's not going to interfere with the covers. And then I took some uh, really good hot glue. When I say really good hot glue, I discovered here a few months ago uh, Gorilla Glue, which I love their glue. Um, they came out with glue sticks, and they say, you know, holds however many percent better than standard hot glue. Well, I tried it, and it does, man. It is some, now, of course, once it cools down, it's not sticky, but it's some sticky shit. It really sticks. Uh, I tried, you know, the old glue in my hot glue gun you know, glue something down and then glue the exact same thing down after I stuck a, a stick of the Gorilla Glue in there. And it really does hold really well. So that's the only thing I come up with. I mean, what do you do? I mean, like I say, they've basically supported this entire board. And it's not like it's that entire switch is holding it. The only thing that is really holding that board is little metal bracket on the back side and then you've got a metal piece on the front with the you know the plas the little plastic pieces sandwiched in between. There's just a little arm on each side that's bent over. That's all that holds it. Just those two little pieces of metal, one on each side of that, that are just bent over. You know, the only thing they're really designed to do is hold the switch together. They're not designed to be holding weight. They're just designed to keep the switch from falling apart. They're using this rotary encoder to hold this entire circuit board and all of this other shit. And then you've got this, you know, they've got these other little, other little boards mounted here. This factory, it's not like that's, you know, somebody bodged a board on it. Yeah, that's, yeah, not very well designed. When you got to go hacking, you know, your own factory radio has crap in heat shrink tubing and then not attached. It's just shoved in between a wiring harness. Yeah, just not very well designed at all, people. I mean, trying... To, 
just throw your hands up in the air. That's about all you can do. So if you have one of these radios, one of these mirages, and your channel selector is going bonkers, you'll turn it and nothing happens, and you know, it's you're having problems, I can pretty much guarantee you what the problem is. Your rotary encoder is falling apart. Those little ears that are normally bent over that hold hold it together, they've just, you know, they're being pulled apart. And you may look down in here like this one. When I first opened, took the covers off of it, there was a gap like, you know, maybe like that much. I could see down through it where the sections of the rotary encoder, because it had actually separated that much. I honestly don't know how it was making any contact whatsoever. And I just pushed on the back of the board and it worked fine. But, you know, jiggle the radio once or twice or spin the dial a couple times and you could see it starting to walk apart. But, yeah, so if you have that problem, the only thing I can suggest is try and get a wire tie in here around. I mean, and this this is, at best, a half-assed solution. I mean, I ain't nowhere proud to say I did that. I mean, that's, that's some, that's some honky-looking shit there. <laughs> I mean, that's not like me to do some, some, some crappy looking shit like that but i don't know what the hell else to do like i say there's nowhere where i can drill a hole down through the board to try and maybe add a an l bracket to add a standoff for a little bit of rear support so it can't pull out and, and flex up and down but hey that'll work i mean i got that in there and i tried really yanking on this board now that the the, the hot glue is dried there that seems to work so i mean i guess that would be my suggestion put a wire tie on here and put a uh, now, I did take an uh, a swab with alcohol and clean the board surface and the inside of the chassis really, really good. Because, um, you know, <laughs> if you're going to use that glue to try and attach this board so it can't move, you want to make sure this is as rigid or it's, as go it's got as good an adhesion as you can get. So, you know, take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and clean, clean the, the surfaces off there that you're going to, you know, squeeze a little bit of hot glue into but there you go there's my yeah like i say at best half fast solution for trying to prevent these rotary encoders from disintegrating because yeah that's that's just poor really really poor design so you know the mirage eh, thumbs down